Hello, good evening, and welcome to my annotating Harry Potter vlog. I have never annotated books before. I have tried to tab books before, um, but I wasn't very organized with it, and I didn't really care for it. This time, I have prepared. I have watched at least 10, maybe? different booktubers how I annotate videos. I have purchased supplies and I am ready. <laughs> so I will show you what I purchased. I purchased these tabs. Lots of people have these tabs, but they have them where they're pointy, like they have like an arrow at one end. I could not find, okay, for example, I bought these in a massive package that says it has like over 4,000 pieces for like 20 bucks. But the ones with the arrows only came with like three sets of these and three sets of arrows for like $17. <laughs> so I was like, mm, I think I can go without the arrows. So um, I forget what they're called, but I'll put the, I'll put it in the description what they're called. Then I have um, a ruler, which I did not buy, I just owned. Then in my pencil crate that I got from Owl Crate, which was a one-off crate that I got for my birthday. I can't open it with one hand, this is a problem. I bought these pens that were recommended from one of the videos that I watched. They are Paper Weight Ink Joy, and they're a bunch of different colors. Okay, so I think I have every color that's here, except for yellow. And there's only one purple, there's also black. So maybe for yellow, I'll use black. Oops. And it's okay because, which I'll show you in a second what I am using each of the tabs for. But the bottom purple tab is just for a favorite or iconic thing that I'm tabbing. So it will match, like they'll never be this bright purple by itself. It will be like a pink and a purple or a green and a purple together because it's my favorite whatever like so it'll be tabbed something else and then also a purple one so I won't need a purple pen but what I'm planning to do is like if I tab pink I'm going to underline whatever I'm tabbing in the matching color and if I'm going to write anything I'm going to write it in that color too so that if there's multiple things on the same page, then there's no like questioning. It won't be confusing, like when I go back and read it again. <clears throat> okay, that's my plan. Anyways, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so in the front of the book, I have created a um, guide. <laughs> So, I don't know if this is backwards. I might have to just flip it. Okay. So, the pink is for love or, like, yes moments. The orange is for, like, magic. So, like, anything, like... I'm not going to tap, like, every single spell or every single potion. But, like, things that I think are cool or important. Or, like, the first time we see something. Or, like, a really cool piece of, like, magic that maybe... Dumbledore does or something like in this book I can already think of like when Hagrid gives Dudley a, a pig's tail like that's gonna be tabbed orange right um yellow is for like characters so I could use it to tab like character descriptions or some character backstory info or um just like a yeah, anything to do with characters, character building. Um, green is for oh my god moments, what the fuck moments, you rude, um, like annoying type stuff. 
um, blue is quotes. And then there's two purples. So the this purple is going to be for stuff, anything to do with Hogwarts. So it could be um, just quirks that Hogwarts has. Like I can already think of like when we're coming and someone explains that like the staircases move. Like, oh, that's going to be tabbed, like, a Hogwarts tab. Um, um, when we get, like, history on the Founding Four, that that kind of stuff is going to be tabbed. Um, yeah, just, like, quirky things about that are specific to Hogwarts. I feel like Hogwarts just has, like, it's just so, like, all-encompassing and just has, like, so many little details about it. Yeah, that I just wanted to have them. So, and then, yeah, like I said, so these, this purple is going to be for favorites. So it's going to be like a favorite character description, a favorite, oh my God moment, a favorite quote, like, or an iconic quote or, you know, so that's what I'm going to try. So the first Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, what I have here is really short. It is only... Oops. Let's see, it's 223 pages long. So, I'm just going to work on it. I'm just going to work on it slowly, and then maybe at the end of every 50 pages, I'll come and give you an update and show you what I've done. Not tab for tab, because who has time for that, but... <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be really fun. All right, here I go. Hey, y'all. So yesterday I finished annotating up to chapter four. Um, and I just wanted to show you because it's close to 50 pages, page 48. So as you can see, there's there's a few, there's quite a few yellow. The yellow I'm used for characters. So because it's the first few chapters, you have a lot of character descriptions. So then I highlight or I underlined them in black. Um, there's also quite a few green, which is green is like, oh my god, what the fuck, annoying, rude, like stuff that kind of upsets you or shocks you, makes you angry. And so remembering that these first few chapters, Harry's with the Dursleys. Um, so how they treat him is like really gross and, uh, I underlined like a lot of stuff. Um, there was one in particular here is this one where I wrote a note. It talks about like how many bedrooms they have. They actually have four bedrooms, one for the adults, one for Dudley, a second one for Dudley's extra toys and a guest bedroom. So I wrote here, as you can see, they had not one, but two extra rooms. And they still put Harry in the cupboard under the stairs. Like, that's... <laughs> ugh. Anyways, and um, yeah, there was like a few um, like iconic things that I used the purple to mark. Um, so this one is yeah like um when Hagrid's yelling at the Dursleys never insult Albus Dumbledore in front of me there's a couple good quotes that I highlighted too oops what was that one this is I felt some kind of way and I had to make a note here and the quote must be here oh yeah you're a wizard Harry <laughs> That one, and then um, I think this one's another Hagrid one. Oh yeah, I didn't realize this. Uh, the first time somebody tells Harry that you've got your mother's eyes, that's Hagrid that says that, and I didn't realize that. So that'd be the we're gonna see that a lot <laughs> uh, as we continue. And then let's see. I really like the quote, like quotes, so especially like ones we've heard all the time. Oh yeah, this is funny when Dumbledore says he has a scar above his left knee, which is a perfect map of the London Underground. And then 
this one here. Yeah. Every child in our world will know his name. That was a McGonagall. Yeah, so I'm really enjoying it. I'm really liking lots. I don't think I tabbed it, but um, at some point it says when Hagrid's telling Harry like what happened to his parents and stuff. It says that um, the night that Voldemort went to James End. Lily's house it was actually Halloween and I don't I didn't remember that yeah here I wrote on Halloween 10 years ago and like that's a really good like a trivia fact because I didn't realize that that was Halloween and then here you see too another thing when they're talking about Voldemort no one ever lived after he decided to kill him. No one except you. And he killed some of the best witches and wizards of the age. And I recognize these names from kids at the school. The McKinnons, the Bones, the Pruitt. So I remembered Susan. But I also remember McKinnons too. So I'm like wondering if the kids at the school with the same names are also like orphans or... um. If, they're, if it was their aunts and uncles that were killed by Voldemort. But yeah, I'm really enjoying it. And so, yeah, I'm going to keep going. I drew a little pig. Because Hagrid gave Dudley a tail. <laughs> and then I loved this. I forgot about this. He says, I meant to turn him into a pig, but I suppose he was so much like a pig anyway, there wasn't much left to do. <laughs> I love Hagrid. All right, there's my update. Hi. Um, okay, so last night um, with Harry Potter, I got um, to chap. I did all of chapter seven. Um, and it's going good. So we had some, um, really important moments in this section. We had Harry finding out he's a wizard and meeting Hagrid and going to Diagon Alley. We had Harry meeting the Weasleys, um, getting on the train and having that first train ride with Ron. Um, he also met Draco in the first in the robe Madame Malkins, and then on the train, and then the sorting ceremony, and um, they went to bed, and I think that's where I stopped reading. Um, there was just like two things that I, that really made me like emotional <laughs> that I wanted to talk about, um, and so I want to show you like how I, well, I only wrote like a big note at the one part and the other part I was just a lot a lot of warm fuzzies but like um okay so when Hagrid um comes to the hut that they're at <clears throat> there was some things I tabbed here that I loved like right from the beginning um like he literally just told Vernon to shut up Ah, uh, shut up, Dursley, you great prune. <laughs> so I love that. And then, um, yeah, he, it's Harry's, like, first actual birthday present is from Hagrid. Um, and the cake in the book is not misspelled. Um, so, yeah, there's that. But also then, where it started to, like, feel... <laughs> emotions <laughs> was um when H Hagrid realizes that Harry doesn't know that he's a wizard he doesn't know that his parents were wizards he doesn't know what Hogwarts is he thinks his parents died in a car crash and Hagrid flips his shit I would have to watch the movie again but I feel like it was really downplayed in the movie compared to the scene um, in the book here. So. 
Yeah, like he is like thundering. What he's saying is written in all caps. Like he is growling at them. He's yelling at the Dursleys. Like he basically like he doesn't just accept like, you know, <laughs> he Sorry, let me Okay, so he says, do you mean to tell me, he growled at the Dursleys, that this boy, this boy, knows nothing about, about anything? Harry thought this was going a bit far, blah, blah, blah. I know some things, I can do math and stuff. Okay, but then he says, about our world, I mean your world, my world, your parents' world. What world? Hagrid looked as if he was about to explode. Dursley, he boomed. Um, Uncle Vernon, who had gone very pale, whispered something that sounded like Mimble Wimble, and Hagrid stared wildly at Harry. But you must know about your mom and dad. I mean, they're famous. You're famous. What? My mom and my dad weren't famous, were they? You don't know. You don't know. Hagrid ran his fingers through his hair, fixing Harry with a bewildered stare. You don't know what you are? He said finally. Uncle Vernon suddenly found his voice. Um... Stop, he commanded. Stop right there, sir. I forbid you to tell that boy anything. A braver man than Vernon Dursley would have quailed under the furious look Hagrid now give him. When Hagrid spoke, his every syllable trembled with rage. You never told him. Never told him what was in the letter Dumbledore left for him? I was there. I saw Dumbledore leave it, Dursley, and you've kept it from him all these years? Kept what from me, said Harry eagerly. Stop! I forbid you, yelled Uncle Vernon in panic. Aunt Petunia gave a gasp of horror. I'll go boil your heads, both of you, said Hagrid. Harry, you're a wizard. Um, I just felt, and I, and I did this because there was not enough room in the book, but just the rage that Hagrid feels, and then as we continue on again, like he gets mad at the Dursleys, he yells at them. He calls them out on their <sighs> bullshit. Um, I wrote here, I feel so much for Hagrid rereading this. His anger at the injustice of, justice of it all makes me love him so much. I don't believe, like, I'm thinking about the rest of the books and everything that happens in the rest of the books and I know at one point Dumbledore has to send, I think, a howler to Aunt Petunia to, um, so that Harry can go back there to the, to the Dursleys. But other than that, I feel like this moment is the only time that someone really stands up for Harry against the Dursleys in this way, in this impassioned way where... They're at. They're actually um, like screaming at them, and just like incredulous at how Harry's been treated. Um, there are other moments in the books, like I think after the fifth book, at the end of the fifth book, a group of men like Mister Weasley and Kingsley Shacklebolt, and I can't remember who else. I believe they go and speak with excuse me, Uncle Vernon and Aunt Petunia and um, kind of try to straighten them out. But that's definitely m more of, like, it's done in more of an adult way. I'm sure there was, like, some threatening involved. But, like, here, like, there's just so emotion, so much emotion. Hagrid hasn't even seen Harry since he was one year old. But just, like, how much he loves him. And I'm gonna fucking cry right now. <laughs> Just how much he loves him and just like how passionate he was there and I'm just like rambling on for seven minutes but that's how I feel okay I felt away and I just want to share that and then when we were when we first meet the Weasleys oh I felt all sorts of things and I was so happy and reading that first um Kind of the first time that Ron and Harry hang out is, like, on the train. And Ron is, like, basically, Harry's asking a bunch of... He asks him, like, all the different questions about different stuff. Like, 
And Ron answers him, like, tells him about Quidditch. And they buy a bunch of treats from the trolley. And Ron tells them what everything is. And then they have fun, like, trying a bunch of it. And he learns about some famous witches and wizards because of the chocolate frog cards. And and it was just, like, so wholesome. And I was just, as I was reading it, I was thinking, like, they don't even know. They don't even know that they're best friends and they don't even know like what they're going to go through together like at this point yet and I'm going to cry again <sighs> get a hold of yourself woman <laughs> it's just Harry Potter <laughs> okay so those were some feelings I had um, I also would like to, for everyone to remember um, this sorting hat has a song in the book and I tabbed it because I fucking love it. And, but also it's like kind of your first, your first real look at like what all the qualities are um, in all the Hogwarts houses. Um, you might belong in Gryffindor where dwell the brave at heart. Their daring nerve and chivalry set Gryffindors apart. You might belong in Hufflepuff where they're just and loyal. Those patient Hufflepuffs are true and unafraid of toil. Or yet in wise old Ravenclaw, if you've a ready mind, where those of wit and learning will always find their kind. Or perhaps in Slytherin, you'll make your real friends, those cunning folk use any means to achieve their ends. And so it's definitely the first time where all of the houses um, are kind of um, explained and their qualities on like an unbiased looking at it. Like, we've already had mention of, like, oh, yeah, anyone who's ever turned bad is in Slytherin, and um, Hufflepuffs are kind of bleh, and we all know that that's not true. Like, every every house has their good qualities um, and bad qualities, so I really love this song. And then, of course, also in the end of the chapter, this school song. Hogwarts, Hogwarts, Hoggy Warty Hogwarts. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, it has been a really long time since I have read this book. And there are lots of little details that I forgot. And so, in some ways, it's just like reading it um, for the first time again. Because... Okay, well, tomorrow is my birthday. So I was, what I was trying to do was do two chapters a day, um, tabbing this. So when did I start? Did I start on Sunday? I don't know. Um, so I did three chapters last night. So I only have to do one right now, I think, to like keep up with it. But because tomorrow's my birthday, something's happening. I don't know what's happening, but it's a secret, I guess. Um, no one's telling me. Anyways. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to um, have time and do a couple chapters tomorrow or not. So I might try to get ahead. But yeah, I'm about the... I'm close to the 100 page mark. It's 99.98 here where I'm about to start chapter 8. But yeah, that's... How it's going. All right, chill. Talk to you later. Hey y'all. Um, I've just finished uh, chapter 12 and passed the 150 page mark. So I'm going to flip through the last um 50 pages and just show you the things that I have tabbed. So we have um oh, my fuck up. <laughs> But we also have um, the first kind of classes. Um, this is about Hogwarts, about the staircases and stuff. Um, we have Snape's speech at the beginning of Potions. Sorry, this is really hard one-handed. Maybe I'll switch hands. Oops. Let's see. Here. The first time on a broomstick. Yay. Um, 
yeah, McGonagall and Wood's conversation about Harry's flying and how excited they were. Yay. Secret passageways. <laughs> we first get to see Fluffy. Oh, yeah. I iconic um, Hermione quote. Uh, we could all have been killed or worse, expelled. And then I thought it was interesting um, that because in the movies, Ron says she really needs to sort out her priorities. And that's not <laughs> that's not in the book. And I didn't realize that. That's funny. Okay, just quickly get to the next tab here. Oh, Wingardium Leviosa, Leviosa, not Leviosa. Oh, the troll. This is the troll. I'm kind of confused here <laughs> about um, what Harry threw at the troll, a tap, um, and why there was a metal pipe. Like. <laughs> But okay, whatever. Convenience, right? Ron doing Wingardium Leviosa. Good job. Um, yeah, she only gave uh, she only gave them five points each for defeating the troll. Like holy, that's funny. This is all Quidditch, and I don't care about Quidditch, so. Yeah, and this is when Hermione um, lit Snape's robes on fire. <laughs> uh, yes, this is so funny. Um, the Weasley twins were punished for bewitching several snowballs so that they followed Quirrell around, bouncing off the back of his turban. So we find out later that on the back of Quirrell's head is Voldemort. So they were literally hitting Voldemort in the back, in the face with snowballs. And I, that's hilarious. I love that. And then I thought this was funny that they're talking about how freezing cold it is inside the school. Um, and I thought it was funny. And I wrote that muggles are better at heating buildings than wizards are. <laughs> Ron was so cute here asking Hagrid if he needed any help with the uh, Christmas trees. Yeah. And then I really just love Christmas. So you're going to see a lot of pink in the next few pages because this is Christmas and he's got presents. Hagrid um, hand whittled him a flute. Mrs. Weasley gave him a sweater and some fudge. Hermione gave him a box of chocolate frogs. Um, and then he gets the invisibility cloak, which is why I've tabbed it. Iconic uh, moment when he finally has something from his dad. And yeah, I just love Christmas and I love like the Weasleys. So we've got a lot of pink going on all here. Um, okay, and then this is the mirror of Erised moment. The first time he looks in the mirror and this is an important moment, and um, it's something that you really don't notice in the films is or realize, I guess, exactly in the films, that this in the mirror of Erised is the first time that he sees his mom and dad. Like before this, he has never seen their faces like in a picture, nothing. So he didn't really, he only knew what he looked like from people telling him. And I don't think anyone really talked about them too much. So this was a really important moment. And I was really not sure like what color to tab it, but I decided on green because I'm using green for like, oh my God moments. So um, yeah, this is the first time he sees his parents in the mirror. Okay. Then, um, then I just, this is the last page. Yeah, I just finished this one. This is at the end of, of course, um, 
Dumbledore um, stopping Harry from, you know, hanging out in the mirror. This is the first time that this conversation, but this is the first time um, Harry and Dumbledore like talk to each other. Um, and so there's some important things like here where Dumbledore says he doesn't need a cloak to become invisible. Um, he's explaining about the mirror of Erised and what it does. And he explains why Ron saw what he saw. So Harry learns a really important thing about who Ron is from Dumbledore here. I think that's really important. You get the iconic quote, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live. That's a big Harry Potter quote um, that you kind of see on lots of merch and everywhere. And then, of course, you have Harry asking Dumbledore what he sees in the mirror. And you get the weird, um, I see myself holding a pair of thick woolen socks. And even Harry realizes that that's probably not true. So, and that's it. That is my 50-page update. So I'm on chapter 13, Nicholas Flamel, um, page 104. 58 I guess and there's 223 pages so I have about um, 65 or so pages left to go so I think I'm probably just gonna it's gonna be the last update when I'm done I will update you again yay Hey y'all, so um, I have just finished my um, annotating Harry Potter. Um, so I'm just gonna show, I'm gonna talk about some of the things that I tabbed in like the last 60 pages of the book or so. Um, there was a really, a couple of really gem moments um, with Neville in them that uh, we didn't see in the movie. I don't know if you noticed, like I think I've been referencing the movie a lot that's just because it has been, it's been for sure over 10 years, um, maybe closer to 15 since I, since I reread this book. So I have obviously like in between that time, I've watched the movie like quite a few times, but rereading this for me, I, there was actually so much in it, so many moments, um, that I totally forgot. And I really, really, really enjoyed, um, this reread. And it kind of brought back the magic of it um, for me. So, yeah. So, with Neville, um, they kind of do a job of making him look like kind of a doofus in the movie. And he's not so much, like, I mean, in the books, they they just do it differently. And so, there's this one part here where he... He comes into the common room and his like legs are like bound together and he's like hopping and everyone's kind of like laughing at him and of course Hermione goes and she does the the reverse curse or she reverses the spell or whatever um and he's just upset and Ron's trying to tell him like you got to stand up to him blah 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 and what does Neville say there's no need to tell me I'm not brave enough to be in Gryffindor. Malfoy's already done that. And he's like getting really upset. And then this. And it just, to me, like, I mean, this is like a really kind of nice moment with Neville. And like more character development for Neville. But it's also like really says a lot about Harry here. And I think, especially in the movies. But like... Harry a lot of the time suffers from like main character syndrome where like out of everyone he seems to have like the least amount of personality <laughs> but um here in this moment this is what I've underlined here Harry felt in the pocket of his robes and pulled out a chocolate frog the very last one from the box Hermione had given him for Christmas he gave it to Neville who looked as though he might cry you're worth 12 of Malfoy Harry said the sorting hat chose you for Gryffindor didn't it and where's Malfoy and Stinking Slytherin? Like, that was just... <laughs> my boys. Like, I love Neville. Like, Neville's just such a sweet bean. And I just, like, felt like I was so happy for Harry doing that. Um, then, of course, like, in this section, what I was reading, 
um, we have the whole thing to with the dragon. Um, the dragon egg and then so I've highlighted when the dragon egg hatched and what the what the dragon looked like. I did that in orange um, for like magical things, magic spells, creatures. That's what orange is for. Um, I highlighted when Hagrid was like crying when they were taking Norbert away. I felt sad for him losing a pet. But, you know, as Hermione said, you live in a wooden house, Hagrid. It's a bad idea. Um, I highlighted some stuff. Uh, yeah, because they, of course, get caught um, being out of bounds and, or out of bed after hours and have to do detention where they look for the unicorn, right? So I highlighted some different stuff that Hagrid said about unicorns. Um, in orange, like a, for magical creatures. Um, and then I highlighted in green, which is like, oh my god, it's kind of like sad when Harry found the unicorn and like how he described that. And then Fiorenz talks about um, the blood of a unicorn and why something would kill a unicorn unicorn and etc. I highlighted that in orange as well. <coughs> okay, and so then we have like a really significant moment. I highlighted it. I tabbed it for both quote and character development because this is for Harry and I used a uh, tab where I wrote some extra notes on it. So I'll read you what I highlighted. Um, so this is Harry, and he said, I'm going out of here tonight, and I'm going to try to get the stone first. You're mad, said Ron. You can't, said Hermione, after what McGonagall and Snape have said. You'll be expelled. So what? Harry shouted. Don't you understand? If Snape gets hold of the stone, Voldemort's coming back. Haven't you heard what it was like when he was trying to take over? There won't be any Hogwarts to get expelled from. He'll flatten it or turn it into a school for the dark arts. Losing points doesn't matter anymore, can't you see? Do you think he'll leave you and your families alone if Gryffindor... Where is it? Oh. Win the House Cup. If I get caught before I can get to the stone, well, I'll have to go back to the Dursleys and wait for Voldemort to find me there. It's only dying a bit later than I would have done because I'm never going to go over to the dark side. I'm going through that trap door tonight and nothing you two say is going to stop me. Voldemort killed my parents, remember? And so I thought that was really significant. <clears throat> like... These kids are only 11 years old. 11. <laughs> and he totally understands what war means and what, like, really the significance of, like, Voldemort coming back in power and, like, what that would mean for not only him but for, like, everyone and the whole world. And, like, such a Gryffindor that he's really just going to jump in there and... And uh, risk his life because he knows it doesn't matter. If he fails, then he's dead anyways. So, yeah, that's what I wrote on my thing. I said, 11-year-old really seems to understand the gravity of the situation. Beyond that, he's willing to step into danger and risk his life to save the world. A true Gryffindor. Oh, Harry. Okay. Um, then, oh yeah, I highlighted the part where Neville tried to stop them. <laughs> oh, Neville. True sweet bean. Um, <laughs> I highlighted the part where uh, they're at the Devil's Snare and they figure out that they need a, like a fire or like light or whatever. And Hermione goes, okay, but there's no wood. And Ron screams at her, are you a witch or not? <laughs> Duh. That's so funny. That was a funny part. <clears throat> oh, there's one thing I highlighted here. When they're playing chess, they're talking about, like, Ron has to sacrifice himself, okay? But he's a knight. And I mean, like, maybe I'm just dumb. Because, like, I don't actually play chess, but, like, I kind of know how. I didn't know, I at least thought I know, like, how the pieces were intended to move. So Ron's a knight, 
So I thought that the knights had to move in like an L shape. So like two up and three over or whatever. Like they could do it one way or the other way, like whatever, as long as it was like an L shape. But he says... That's chess, snapped Ron. You've got to make some sacrifices. I take one step forward, and she'll take me, and that leaves you to free to checkmate the king, Harry. But how, if you're a knight, how could you just take one step forward? Somebody, like, if you're, st if you got this far in the vlog, like, am I right? Like, can't knights, don't they have to move in an L shape? I mean, I could be wrong. Because I don't actually play chess, but that's just what I thought. Okay, and then I highlighted when Harry, when Hermione was like, after they figured out the potions and Hermione's going to leave Harry, like Harry's going to go the one way and Hermione's going to go back and try to get Dumbledore. And she uh, almost started crying and she gave him a big hug. I highlighted that. And then, of course, her quote she, she says to him, Harry, you're a great wizard, you know. And he says, I'm not as good as you. Very embarrassed as she let go of him. And Hermione says, me, books and cleverness, they're more important things. Friendship and bravery and, oh, Harry, be careful. <laughs> okay, and then there's the chapter with Quirrell. And so you have the, uh, there was a lot of quotes here at the end. Uh, you have the, there is no good and evil. There's only power. And those too weak to seek it. Quirrell says that. Um, oops. Then I highlighted it with, I tapped with the character tab. Um, when Harry sees what Voldemort looks like for the first time. Uh, it, it was a chalk white face with glaring red eyes and slits for nostrils like a snake. Um. then, oh yes. And then we have Dumbledore. Um, Dumbledore in the hospital wing. And my God, I swear there's like seven like Dumbledore quotes that were just in this one conversation. Okay, so we have... After all, to the well-organized mind, death is but the next great adventure. Um, then he also says, uh, humans do have a knack of choosing precisely those things which are worse for them. Okay, and then, and then fear of a name increases fear of the thing itself. And then he says, the truth is a beautiful and terrible thing and should therefore be treated with great caution. It's this whole conversation. And then, of course, alas, earwax <laughs> when he has the bean. Um, oh, my gosh. When Hagrid gives Harry the, the book of photographs. <sighs> I did that in pink and then, and then in purple for, like, favorite. Oh, my God. Hagrid. Hagrid's everything, you guys. Uh, it seemed to be a handsome leather-covered book. Harry opened it curiously. It was full of wizard photographs. Smiling and waving at him from every page were his mother and father. Sent owls off to all your parents' old school friends asking for photos. Knew you didn't have any. Do you like it? Harry couldn't speak, but Hagrid understood. <sighs> I wrote here, I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> then we have another Dumbledore quote when he is giving out the points. There are all kinds of courage, said Dumbledore, smiling. It takes a great deal of bravery to stand up to our em enemies, but just as much to stand up to our friends. Because Neville gets 10 points, and then they win the House Cup. And that was the last tab, and there was only, like, two pages left after that. So, yes, I'm done. My reread of Harry Potter, my tab, that's what they look like. So, be I was really inconsistent with, like... Sometimes they're really long, sometimes they're really short, but it looks really pretty and I had so much fun, honestly. I was going to combine because I'm going to annotate all of them, um, but I don't know if I'm going to vlog it for every single one. Like this one was significant because it was my first time annotating and it's the first one and I was going to, but I was going to vlog and combine Philosopher's Stone and Chamber of Secrets. 
but I think I actually have um, close to or more than even 30 minutes of footage already for this vlog so I think I'm just gonna put it up like this but yeah if you guys have ever vlogged Harry or, I mean uh, tab Harry Potter or I don't know like what are your experiences annotating let me know in the comments um, also like in my just in the description are my links to my Twitter and my Goodreads and uh, yeah so talk to me about books and have a great day bye that was a stupid way to end it talk to me about books um same don't forget to like and subscribe and that's all for me today bye